Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 280. The day after April Fool's Day, so you can trust everything that we say today. Uh, these meetings are recorded for those of you that are, aren't with us right here, right now. Um, and you maybe got a whole bunch of extra stuff on the front of this because the recording is kind of goofed up. Uh, but we'll get the live stream going. Uh, let's talk about what we're talking about today. If you're here, go ahead and say hi. We're going to talk about Wix 5 launching on Friday. Uh, we're not going to say much more than that than Wix 5 launches on Friday. Everything looks like that. We'll do our issue triage, which is going to show us why Wix 5 launches on Friday. And then I want to take a moment to talk about the Wix V6 Git strategy because we will probably start enacting that uh, before the next meeting. But we'll talk about that during questions and comments and other things people want to talk about. So Wix 5, Friday. Everything has been going pretty smoothly. Uh, any issues that have been reported, as we will see there are a few, have been uh, generally applicable uh, or immediately fixed by me, which I found one little thing when I was doing some Wix 6 experimentation. I found a Wix 5 bug, which is pretty good. We'll talk about that one. Um, and otherwise, things look really smooth. So there's nothing to suggest that we're not done on Friday. Wix 5 being done, ship it and people will be able to have their, their much excited and happy RTM release. So uh, I don't have a lot more to say. We were here mostly to this week to talk about five in case something went wrong and nothing seems to be going wrong. So this is all good stuff right now. So let's go talk about what did come in in the last week, which is actually not a lot. So Bob, you ready? I'm ready. All right, uh, we have a couple things we left from the last meeting and then a few things to talk about uh, otherwise. So, uh, overwrite not working for certificate element. We kept this around, you reminded me, because Jacob had mentioned something about this. Right, and Jacob's not here and he's not responded. Um, this isn't happening at five. Do we keep it one more week just to see if Jacob or whatever, another meeting to see if Jacob shows up? Um, I mean, that's he usually shows up eventually. Yeah, it's a sign to him. Yeah. Um, it's not on a milestone. I'm fine taking it out of triage. No, because if it's assigned to him, no, and it's not on a milestone, it needs to be triage. So this is the right place for it, or oh. we need to unassign it and put it back up for grabs. So. All right, well, one more week then. All right, or we have to talk about that. When is the next meeting? Is it next week or is it in two weeks? Oh, sorry, one more meeting. One more meeting, I like that, yes. One more All right. Uh, support for SNI, we kept this here, I think, just to talk about it in case maybe they did the work in the last week. Um, they did not. So, I think we uh, push this out, right? I, there's a pull request with it. That's the interesting yeah. thing. There's a pull request that needs work. And they're just not coming back to do the work. It's not unusual, <laughs> unfortunately. Yes, life gets in the way sometimes. So the question is, do we do we put it back up for grabs? Do we or? Well, so uh, I don't think this fits our our, our current matrix. Yeah, so it I, be up for grabs. No, and it's assigned, to assigned to some that doesn't work. Um, it, it, it's in it's not logical. It's not going to end up in a five at this point. Definitely needs to come out of the five miles. So we could put it in future and talk about it then if we just want to kick the can down the road. Keep it uh, triage. And keep it triage. Yeah, or yeah, and I would keep it triage. I mean, we're just basically just kicking this down the road until finally we decide to talk about it or tackle it. But always keeping it in our vision. Well, yeah, because we need to get rid of it at some point, right? I mean, well, we could put it in future, but we need to go through future here when we talk about six. So it's not like <laughs> by not marking it triage that we're not going to get very far, or it's not going to go very far. Um, so, yeah, I, sorry, I'm 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 lamenting the the um, we need to keep something on the triage list to make sure that we talk about it at some point. Well, we could put it in future and talk about it when we talk about future stuff, which is going to be really soon. Yeah, I'm I'm. I'm just wondering if that's the better alternative when we have something like this, which we know is interesting and, you know, we do have a pull request. So maybe it's something we can work up if there's some interest among the committers. 
among right. attendees. Yeah. I just, I don't know if. All right. Let's put it in future. In triage all right. Let's perfect. put it in future and triage because, you know, it's not going in five. That's the big thing we need yeah. to denote. Agreed. So Agreed. let's do that. Yeah. All right. Um, temp directory issue after Wix 405 upgrade. Ah, right. So this one's interesting. Looked at this. Some people are getting an access denied um, in their managed custom actions because the SFXCA uh, can't write to the location that, or can't extract the DLL, do all the thing that it does when trying to get the managed code loaded. And what's interesting is that it's it, these per user actions are being extracted to a per machine location. And I have a test for this that extracts it to a per machine or per user location as expected. This all comes from the fix around uh, the DLL hijacking stuff that we've been dealing with. So this is a fix inside FXCA, which was honestly smaller and we thought a lot less uh, problematic. I guess that just goes to show us, doesn't it? Um, so I've not been able to make this happen, um, although a few other people have. Um, so I, I don't know what to do. I've like, I've been hesitant to do a fix without understanding why it's showing up differently because it should not be showing up differently. Um, or I don't know why the installer's behavior would be different between these two routes. And this is a, <laughs> a security angle. So it's not like not understanding what's going on is a little scary. Um, Well, but this itself isn't a security problem. No, no, sorry. Changing the behavior. It was in response right, to a security. Right. Changing the behavior could reopen the security vulnerability. Sorry. To be, that's the part that, to be clear, that's the thing I'm worried about. The current behavior makes, works for me, works on all the machines I've tried, and is secure. <laughs> we can see how it all works. Changing to a different behavior without being able to reproduce the behavior these people are seeing could open security vulnerabilities not being able to uh work through all of the different ways of it happening it's just the behavior doesn't make sense from the windows installer um or from from everything that i know about the way they work that's not to say that there's not some reason for it it's just i've never seen it happen this way um and the old code was being lackadaisical about its security profile on this so that's why we fixed it um, so anyway, uh, this will need a bit more thinking, um, and I am going, I, I'll take this cause I'm going to spend a little bit of time thinking about it, um, and how, to, if there's anything more that could be done. I just haven't had a chance to do that with all of the releases we've been having up to this point. Cause we got a heat wave release finally on Friday. <sighs> and then my weekend went really strange. Um, at the a viral tweet that went crazy. So I've not had a chance to really sit and think about all the angles of this, but I'll take it. I'll look at it. Ideally get a fix in for five because chances are we're going to have to do something and I don't really want to have to figure this out and then do a 501 right off the bat. So oh, I agree with that, sir. All right. Yeah. So give it to me. I, I just have to sit and think about it. I'm just worried about reopening the security vulnerability right? that, or creating a one in here. So, and if I could reproduce this, this would help a lot. It'd be like, Oh yeah. When you do this, it's happening that, but I have, my custom actions are almost identical. It's identical to one of the ones up here. And I guess I can, I'll create a couple more examples. People have some that are more interesting. I'll try them too. All right. So I'll take it. I'll go look at it. To be clear, like Bob said, there's no security vulnerability. In fact, the security vulnerability maybe made things too tight in this case. So the problem is we have to open up and make it a little bit more open, which of course is really dangerous because you already shut it down to get rid of security vulnerability. Making it more flexible just invites that vulnerability to come right back in. So I anyway, have to go look at that one and sit and think about it. Speaking of vulnerabilities, 8079, consider relisting vulnerable package versions. And there's some blog post out there that the tool expects to be able to 
do this, but it doesn't work on unlisted. But then Microsoft guidance is the official Microsoft guidance, not on the blog, is to not list vulnerable packages, which is what we've done. And I think we're doing the right thing. So I don't feel a great need to go and undo this. I definitely don't want to have the vulnerable packages listed. That yeah, just that, seems that, extremely counterproductive. That seems worse from the from the fact that mm. you know you have to know to use this particular switch yeah. in a random command. Yeah. And Whereas, you know, if you just a, a normal workflow for a NuGet package is to just, you know, go pick whatever shows up in your in your you know, UI of choice. Yeah, I, we, we should not be listing vulnerable packages. Yeah, yeah. Also, they, they mentioned that Microsoft doesn't follow practice themselves. And and I agree, and I know why. Because the experience of managing the listing of all these things is a nightmare in <laughs> NuGet. It's extremely manual. It, it is a terrible experience. NuGet really should improve this area. Because if you have, they have like thousands of packages. You have to go back and you have to click on each version to unlist it and go click drop a little box down to unlist it and then hit save and then click the next version of that same package unlist it save click the it's just if there's a command line out there i missed it but i've not seen it um it's bad it is a bad bad experience and you know for sure we only have like i don't know, 20 packages that i had to do it on so it was less of an issue <laughs> but i still did the work so i appreciate what they're saying this blog post is interesting uh microsoft should make this work with their own recommendations if they want this tool to really be useful is really what it comes down to um i don't think we should be opening up and making ourselves less vulnerable because they haven't solved that problem really it comes down to nuget supporting these kind of scenarios they have a lot of things to do i appreciate they're busy this can be a priority or not for them all right so we're not doing that that's we can just resolve that external it's like yeah microsoft can sort out how they want that to work um, yeah it seems it seems like it's a bug in the list package command. yeah actually i think it's a bug in the nougat that you can't get the unlisted maybe or something like that like i had some really weird like if you ask nougat.org for unlisted packages i don't think it gives them to them to you if you ask like normal yeah. feeds, it does get to. And how do I know this? I know this because Visual yeah. Studio broke us in massive ways when we were trying to do the heat wave update. And we spent, I don't know, two, three days updating all of our freaking dependencies. And they unlist packages that we depend on. So we have to go then find the new replacements. And when you ask NuGet, hey, can you show me all the versions of this? That does not. It only shows you the listed ones. So I think NuGet.org ignores, actively ignores the list delisted packages command. Anyway, I'm not bitter. That wasn't hard. That was extremely hard and extremely painful this last week. Uh, that's what we did last week. In case you wondered why things have taken time. Everything takes too much time right now. And when you put nougat in it, it, anyway. So I feel their pain. I wish I had not remembered last week. I put it on my brain. All right. The experiences can be better. They're not our experiences. They should go fix them. We're doing the right thing. 8080, 314 release binaries can turn incorrect file versions. Um, the file version is that, and the product version is that. That's not incorrect. It's a little bit weird. It's weird. Looking, it's weird. But it's not incorrect. And I'm going to leave it for the interested reader to guess why it's why we did that in three, but we're not going to solve it here. So anyway, it's expected. As weird as it is in three, that is the way it is. It's correct. So you can go think about it for a while, and I'll give bonus points to anybody that guesses it. And you can come back in the next can meeting I, and tell what I? the answer is. No, no, you know can why. I? You oh. don't count. You well, you're on you, this side of the airlock. You don't get to play in the game. There's that whole be, that whole yeah, thing. But, but, to be fair, it was a really long time ago, so I don't know that I remember. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You have inside information. Everybody else, yeah, I... if you think about it for a while, you'll figure it out. Um, all right. And then the last one, this was the one I hinted at earlier in the meeting, 8091. Uh, references to the native NuGet packages use Wix 4's upper bound. So if you look at, like, in Wix 5, the Wix, uh, the, the WCA utils new spec, it has a reference, it depends on dutil, and it had a reference where the upper bound is not including five. And this has worked perfectly because all of the pre-releases are less than five. So all the dependencies have. But when we release, the we would have the lower bound would be 
five and the upper bound would be less than five, which does not work. Anyway, I tripped across this because I started doing some work in six around getting our versioning kind of sorted out and then saw this and went, oh, this is not good. So in five, given the time frame, I just fixed the numbers to all be six like they should be. It's the same thing we did in four. The number was five for four. The number is six, the max upper bound of for all the V5 things. Anyway, so uh, this fixes that in um, for Wix 5, and I have already started to change in Wix 6 to automate this so we don't have to do it again by hand. I did not do the automation in V5 because that felt like more moving parts than necessary right now. I just went and fixed all the things and got that in this morning. I found it Friday. Yeah, I found that fr late Friday. So uh, small change would have been very weird when we released five. I don't know what we would, it would have been not great. And you can't see it until <laughs> you release the final version. So I will fix this so it doesn't happen again in week six um, and, and all versions after that. I will automate this problem away. So yeah, that was a, that was, this is the only five bug that came about and you know, nobody would find it by using it. <laughs> you had to look at it and go, huh, that doesn't look right. All right. So that's triage. You know what? I realized we should look at all the things in the five RC two. No, sorry. The five straight up and talk about all these. Cause some of these, Oh no, there are nothing in five. Oh, not label triage. I want to look at everything in five. There we are. Um, we have some documentation. We're going to do that. That doesn't affect the five release. So I haven't decided if I'm gonna keep it here or put it in V future, whatever. The same thing is with the fingerprint. Those are both documentation things. Um, new get read me. Um, package. Yeah. Readings. Uh, some of them will happen. Right. Uh, we can also fix those the... after we ship because you can upload the readmes to newget.org directly. So that's why all these doc things are not like have to be done before we release five. Well, if I don't have the pressure of trying to do at least some of them before release, they're never going to get done. Right. So. Well, then, then never mind. You have to do them before. <laughs> anyway. Now let me talk to my boss first. Right, right. Uh, there's that. Okay. And then the temp directory is in five. I'll just put that there because I'm going to sit and think about loosening that. However, I saw that. So yeah, that that's everything from today. Why are these still showing up? Oh, do I not have is closed? Oh, not is closed. Okay, fine. All right, so the doc things at the top and then this one thing about the managed code custom actions I have to think about. All right, that makes sense. That's where we're at. Looking good. Again, still looking really good for Friday. Uh, let's go back to the slides. And since, I mean, Wix 5, we're gonna finish it this week, which means we will finish it before the next meeting. So I wanna talk about things that will probably start for Wix 6, because Wix 6 will open up. Uh, the the uh, big change in uh, Wix 6 that I've been thinking about after playing with it is I'm gonna change our Git strategy. This only affects anybody contributing directly to Wix, not anywhere else, uh, but we currently follow a, a modified Git flow and modified is pretty generous. It's, it's a very minim, minimum Git flow. Git flow is like really popular a long time ago or it came out and it's like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. And it made sense to me back then. Um, but after doing three releases <laughs> several times in, or a couple times in the last little bit, in the last month, uh, so many releases in the last month, I, I've come to see some less of the advantages of it, or basically that there are very few advantages of it, and that we can just go to trunk-based development. And, I've, and after doing these releases and rethinking what I thought was really cool about Gitflow, or just made a lot of sense about Gitflow and rethinking about the world right now, I realized that this concept of release flow, you can go search it, uh, makes a whole lot more sense uh, for the way that we operate. Um, and the release flow documents I've seen have been by like really large teams. We are not a really large team, so ours will be simplified. The simplifications are make it pretty easy to understand. It's trunk-based development. That means that we are operating in the main branch. Uh, what is to, today? Today is develop, which is essentially our main branch. That's where all the work does. Um, we'll be renamed main. We'll just catch up with what everybody else is naming their main branch now. 
um, because it's just a name. And we all of the development will start happening for Wix 6 in Maine, which will just basically be develop. Uh, and develop will, of course, be gone. The master branch will be deleted. So there will be no master branch. Essentially, you know, master main is a new name for master. Develop is becoming the main. It, it all goes away. They all collapse into one thing, and it's just main. And that's what we work on. That'll be Wix 6, and that's the thing we work on. When we have to go back and create releases for older versions of Wix, which we do for like when a fire joint customer reports a bug and we have to go fix it, or there's a security release, which we never, ever, 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 ever have, um, we already have to go back to the old versions and create a branch off of that and do a release off of that. That's a release branch. And I realized that that was what we were doing. And this whole concept between master being the last release and develop being where we were working didn't make any sense. And that's when it all clicked for me. So we were just getting rid of develop clappings in or develop is becoming main master goes away and whenever we have to do a release we will create branches like we already have been and they're short-lived branches they live as long as we need for the release to exist we create those off of main and we will continue to cherry pick changes um, from main into those branches as much as possible one of the reasons that wix 3 is going away by the way is because you can't cherry pick out of main into three because it's so old and so different we have to like rewrite the changes completely for those branches. So it's going away. <laughs> like all of this has just been, given the experiences we've been having, the net result is you only have to focus on main. The only people, you, you know, all of you out there, just look at main. That's the only thing that matters. That is whatever release we're working towards. Uh, release branches live only for a short period of time so that we can take older get fixes to older places and we don't do that generally. So you don't have to worry about those. Um, you'll see the builds come out of them basically is what happens from there. So this simplifies a lot. We will update the, the readme and the Wix repo all about development. So that you're like, hey, you just get to work on main, just target main. There will only be one branch in um, Wix v6, which is main, um, unless you see like uh, Bob or I can create development branches, uh, the topic branches, what they call them, whatever. I just call them, you know, it's like the branch you have long enough to get your work done to do a PR on it. Uh, those just appear and then go away because they get merged in the main. So in the end, you will see one branch in Wix, it'll be main, and it'll tell you where we're going, going forward. So it's a very simple model. Um, I've probably talked way more than I need to about it because it is so simple um, in the end. It's not dramatically different. You know, than what we have today. No, it's, it's in terms of it, there's one primary branch that we work off of. Yes, and that that's been true for for years. That's true. Uh, the difference is is in the is in managing multiple releases. Yeah, which is something that basically we have not had to do. Right. In the past, the only other time there was overlap, I believe, was three eleven one and three ten three. Probably. I don't think we had any any other overlapping releases probably until 2024. Yeah. So this is just having learned things and the world has also moved beyond Gitflow also. Like it's not as popular now. Um, and anyway, so all this makes sense. So there you go. There's a geeky deep dive into release uh, strategy. If you ever thought about reevaluating the one that you have and the one that we have and why we picked ours and where we're going. There's a, a, a tiny little snippet that you can dig into and go, huh, that was interesting. Otherwise, I'm sure you're all bored and be like, all right, cool. If I'm making changes, I'm making them against main in Wix 6, a.k.a. like next week is my goal. Next week, you're making them in your target main. So to that end, questions, comments, things people want to ask about. And I always, when I ask that question, while you guys think about, hey, what do you want to talk about or what questions do you have? And you have to type in the little box and I try to give you enough time to, to do that. Uh, we talk about the next meeting, which is actually an interesting question for today. Should we have a meeting a week from now? And to get back on our previous Thursdays we were on, since today is an off Thursday, or do we just so go an off Tuesday. Tuesday? Why did I say Thursday? Uh, it's been Thursdays for a long time. So do we go for next Tuesday? Because that would get us back on our our two Tuesdays schedule that we've had for most of this year, back and forth. Or do we go, no, nah, let's just go two weeks from now. 
um, which would be the 16th. Day after tax day. Yeah. I'm inclined to do the 16th because I don't think there's going to be enough for us to do in a couple of days after the release. And yeah, I agree with like, that. Like, let's give it a week to bake and see what happens and then come and talk about how things are going for Wix 5 being RTM. So move it to the 16th, the meeting, basically like we would always say at this point, and the meeting will be two weeks from now. Does that sound right? Works for me. All right. All right. I hope I gave people enough time to type things. Um, Wix 5 is coming out at the end of this week. Uh, it's crazy. It will be 20 years of Wix being open source. I feel like we need to do a big party, but I don't really know what I would do. So um, <laughs> yeah, we've done a lot of work in the last couple months all around making all these things go. So I think I'm mostly just going to be relieved when we finally get it. All right, cool. Done. There'll be no bugs. There will be nothing else for us to do. We'll be able to sit and chill for a while and everything will be perfect. Um, yeah, that, I think that's that. Any other questions? Last call kind of thing. All right. If not, I think that's all we have. Bob, did I miss anything? I think it comes to mind. All right. Yeah. So, week five, Friday. It feels for us like kind of the end of that. Skip next week and go weekly from We're not going to go weekly from there, Blair, to be clear. Two weeks. I think you mean every two weeks. Skip next week and go two weeks from there. I'm afraid Blair is way behind if he just sent that message. All right. Yeah. So, we're going to go the 16th and then go every two weeks after that. So we will be back in two weeks, same time, same place. Wix 5 will have shipped. We will be celebrating its success. And that's all I got. We'll see you guys in two weeks. Bye. Bye.